Kim last night. Did she? Where was Guy on at? At Rose Hill. At, at the, 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 well, he was on at the Bridge Hotel, I think, in Balmain. Yeah, yeah, there. And when she came home, mm. oh, she was quite excited. Oh, bet. He's I a terrific to, performer. I had to get the, you know, the little sprinkler when you iron the clothes and you put the water on? Yes. To put that on her a bit. A little doubt, just to cool her down. Yes. Yes, he's yes. got that effect on people. He's a terrific performer. I'm going to chat with Guy later on tonight, Cloud Nine, coming up very soon. Oh. He's our mate. She said he was fantastic. They say he's terrific. I haven't uh, I haven't seen him in concert. I've seen him on DVDs, and obviously I've heard his music, but I haven't been to one of his shows yet. Well, there's a few puddles left on the floor. I can oh, see dear. Them. Well, that's no good. I hope you mopped all of that up, Cloud Nine. Oh, 13, 13, 32, that's he's on the phone, is he? Hey folks, this is Guy Sebastian and you're listening to Stuart Bocking on 2UE. Catch up with him next. Well, right now, very special guest online. I'm pleased to welcome him back to the program. Guy Sebastian, he's very busy promoting his Memphis album on tour at the moment, but not too busy to chat to us. He's on the line. Hi, Guy. Never too busy, Stuart. How are you? I'm terrific, mate. How are you? I'm very well. Just uh, um, recouping from a show that that I had last night, and and uh, and yeah, we just started the tour, which is great fun. I got the guys over from Memphis, the uh, Blues Brothers band, and the the, the uh, MG. So they're um, yeah, they, they're getting into gear, and we had a great great night last night. Well, by all the accounts, they were well and truly in top gear last night. You're at the Bridge Hotel in Balmain. They tell me it went off. Yeah, it was it was the best show for for me. The best show ever for me like, really the most enjoyable show and I don't know it just um, just uh, I think there were so many moments where I just had to kind of take a step back and think this is unbelievable like the history that is behind me as I'm singing these songs like you know they start playing Dock of the Bay and it's the guys that played it, you know, in That's the 50s. It. On, you know, the, the, the guy who wrote the song with Otis Redding is playing guitar. And same as, you know, uh, Midnight Hour, Knock On, all these songs that I keep starting, I'm like, these guys played the original and wrote the songs and, you know, were the sound that created, you know, like, uh, and, and even I was hearing all these bass lines in rehearsal. And then myself and my other singer, Gary, uh, we were going through all the songs that have ripped off those bass lines. Mm. And uh, it's just amazing, like, those guys were the creators of a lot of the music that we hear today, you know, especially soul music. They've just, you know, between soul and rock music, they've had a massive influence. And, um, you know, Steve being, you know, the best blues guitarist ever, you know, and, and you know, he was voted the second best guitarist behind Jimi Hendrix. That's right, Steve Cropper from uh, the Blues Brothers Band. And, of course, up front, right. there's this guy. That's right, yeah. And, I, look, I, I feel like I've never sung um, the way I do when I've got those guys behind me, they just get this pocket that is just amazing to sing to, and um, oh, I love it, love it. When you first met them, rehearsing and performing the first couple of times, was it a little overwhelming for you, given you were surrounded by what would almost be regarded as sort of music royalty? Was it difficult for you to come to grips with that? Um, yeah, for, at first, I guess I was, I was pretty nervous, um, you know, being, you know, the guys that that I've, you know, looked up to and heard heard so much music from over the last, you know, sort of short twenty six years of my life. But, um, <laughs> but, You've you packed know, a bit into those twenty six years, mind you. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, Steve is forty years my senior. <laughs> but um, don't remind him of that, mate, will you? Oh, I won't. You're probably helping keep him young. That's right. On stage, he says I'm only 20 years. He's, he's <laughs> <laughs> but he, um, yeah, he like the, the, these guys just made me feel so welcome. You know, in the studio, they made me feel. Um, they made me feel like I, I was, um, you know, like I, I was uh, an amazing singer. You know, that that's just the way they made me feel that that I was worthy of being there. And you know, even though I'm just a, a young, you know, Aussie do that's out there you know huh. playing with these cats like and they never made me feel like that well the thing about it is they obviously know a little bit about you and they've obviously heard your music beforehand otherwise you would never have been able to get the likes of steve cropper donald dunn lester snell to actually agree to come out here and tour with you so it says a fair bit about you as well guy oh thanks mate and they're having a ball i got a message that i saved on my phone from duck the other day and he doesn't show a lot of emotion and it actually well, uh, there was three of us listening to the message my my, uh, my fiance and also uh, the singer that i was talking about before we i played them this message and it was the sweetest thing because he's not he doesn't really show much emotion right you know i heard this message and, he, and, and it basically was uh guy this is duck 
I just wanted to ring you to thank you for inviting me on this tour. I'm having the time of my life, and it's an honor to play with you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> just, it was the sweetest, sweetest message, and, and just to have, you know, these guys be so humble and so giving of, you know, like they were, they were so nervous, so nervous for the show, and um, even though they'd been playing this stuff for 50 years, you know, they'd, yes. um, like Lester, the keyboard player, for example, he, um, uh, his wife said, you know, Lester, um, three glasses of wine straight, I've never seen him so nervous, he was so petrified, and <laughs> so it is. Gee, again. the impact you're having on these old salts, Guy, I tell you what. <laughs> I uh, know, look, it's, it's a lot of fun and I'm learning a lot from them. So it sounds like they're going on a first yeah. date or something like that. They're all that concerned. We're up front with Guy Sebastian here. I know, it's great. It's awesome fun. But, but yeah, the bridge was amazing. We got Canberra tomorrow and then we're back in Sydney for the state theatre shows and I think we've got South Sydney's at some point and Wollongong we've got and, and um, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I notice you've got Canberra tomorrow and then across the weekend you're in Melbourne and Hobart, Wollongong on the Tuesday and then you're back in Sydney for that show, the State Theatre on the Thursday, March the 6th. I know plenty of your fans, Linda and many others, looking forward to seeing it yet again at the State <laughs> Theatre. Uh, you've got some very devoted fans, haven't you? You must be very grateful for that. Oh, absolutely! Look, you, you couldn't do—I couldn't do what I do without them. You know, they are an amazing bunch and, and extremely loyal. And um, you know, they really are a beautiful, you know, core cool group of people. That you know, like they, they, they're the guys that go into battle with you when when someone, um, you know, when someone does you wrong, or you know, sure. people that ring up the radio station and get your stuff played, and that that rock up, you know, gig after gig with um, you know encouragement and things like that, and and. Um, you know, I've got a. I'm a very, very lucky performer to have the the people that I've got. I really am. They're all part of Guy's posse, and of course, the Canberra people can feel very, very lucky because if it wasn't for the leap year being this year, they'd miss out on your show tomorrow. That's true. There'd be no February 29. They'd be brushed. Exactly. I've never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the tour people did. They thought, "Yeah, beauty, another chance to get another show out of Guy." Exactly. <laughs> when I know you went out to the airport when the uh, the members of the the band arrived, was there a little bit of nervous anticipation from you, thinking, "Have they actually agreed to this? Will they have hopped on the plane? Will they be uh, here as I'm waiting for them at the airport?" A little bit. I, I was. I was just. Oh, I hope they caught that flight. You know, I, I know what it's <laughs> like in Memphis. Everyone's just a little bit laid back. <laughs> yes, Memphis uh, time. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and will they get the grog through duty free? That was probably your other concern. Yeah, exactly. That, I, no, I um, I was a bit worried at first, but, <laughs> but I knew they'd come. I mean, they were sending me emails and things like that saying how they, how excited they were. They hadn't been to Australia for 30 years or something, and the last time they came was with the Blues Brothers Band and this and that. So, yeah, it was it's great to see that enthusiasm from guys, you know, who have been doing this yeah. and playing music for so many years. Like I said, like 50, 60 years they've been playing music. Well, let's be honest, the last time they came, guy, they probably can't remember it anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good old rock and roll. That's exactly right. They might have wandered around in a stupor the last time around, so this is a terrific refresher course for them. Exactly, and now their wives are with them, so yeah. they're on their best behaviour. Of course, that's right. A little older, a little wiser. What do you think, now that you've been performing the songs from the album, what do you think's your favourite song? Um, I think the best one on tour uh, it seems to get the most kind of... Um, reaction is probably I've Been Loving You Too Long by Otis Redding yeah. it's a, a beautiful song and, and I think the, you know Steve shares a bit of a story prior to going on you know and singing it and, and uh, you know the, these guys had told, told me all sorts of stories um, you know like every song basically has a little story attached to it and um, it's amazing hearing these stories first hand um, you know from someone that was actually there saying oh you know I remember when they were writing that song and, and Sam Moore was in the toilet and and we were like, come on, Sam, we've got to get this thing going. And he said, hold on, hold on, I'm coming, I'm coming. And that's, and that's how we got the song. <laughs> that's how it came. Mate, you've just about got the accent down. Pat, they might take you back with them. Oh, that's right. No, I, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm spent a little bit of time there and I'm bad I'm so bad with accents if I moved I'd be one of those <laughs> sort of people that we all can't stand that you know go overseas for a little while and then start speaking an accent but I'm so bad whether it's South African or wherever I'm at like I just 
I'd start changing my accent really bad. I think it's part of being a singer as well because my whole thing is about mimicking. Yeah, that's right. Um, Mm. You know, that, that's how all singers learn. You mimic your hero when you're it. young, and you, you, you sort of transform your voice, and then eventually get your own flavour. But because you get so used to doing that, I think it's bad with accents. Well, just think, there's a whole generation of young singers coming through now mimicking Guy Sebastian. <laughs> it, it's happening. There's no doubt about it. Quick bit of acapella on the phone. Oh yes, yeah, sure. What would you like to hear anything you like, mate? Just give us a little burst. Always love to hear from you. Alright, let's, um, I've actually got a bit of, uh, I've got my guitar here. Where's my pick? I can actually play my guitar and sing. Sitting in the morning sun. I'll be sitting in the evening sun. Watching the ships rolling. And I watch them all the way again. I'm just gonna sit on the top of the bay Watching the clouds roll away I'm just gonna sit on the top of the bay Wasting time You're too good. You're too good. You're worth more money. It's terrific to be able to catch up with you. Good luck over the weekend. The show in Canberra tomorrow, Melbourne and Hobart Saturday and Sunday, then Wollongong Tuesday at the Regent Theatre and the Sydney State Theatre on Thursday night. Good luck with it all, Guy, and terrific to catch up with you again. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you.